Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Bay City Players as we present another original comedy. My name is Mike Wisniewski, and I'm glad you have joined us for our 13th online performance. Last week, we brought you an original comedy, The Cupcake Conspiracy by C.J. Elrich and Philip Kaplan, both from New York. Tonight, we are thrilled to present Bitter Alice by playwright Daniel Fenton from Indiana. Bay City Players is excited to, to participate in the Make Art Virtual campaign started by our friends at Midland Center for the Arts. Also, we would like to thank our season sponsors, Chemical Bank, Independent Bank, Landau Packaging Systems, Skorupski Family Funeral Home and Cremation Services, Wildfire Credit Union, and Michigan Sugar. Bay City Players is dedicated to our mission of providing high quality theatrical experiences for the entertainment, education, and enrichment for all members of the community. The show must go on, but virtually. So if you're enjoying our virtual performances brought to you by Original Playwrights, please consider donating to Bay City Players by going to our website and click the donate button. With our doors being closed, we are grateful to use this platform to connect with each other. So please feel free to comment as the show goes on and let us know what you think. Our cast comes to you with little rehearsal time and without access to our theater has found props and costumes to use from their own home. If you are interested in participating in future programs such as this, please send us a message on our Facebook page or message myself on Facebook, MJ Wisniewski personally, and I will add you to the list. Also stay tuned for our next performance, more about that at the end of the show. And speaking of the show, I would like to now introduce our cast. So cast, when I call your name, give a wave to the audience, let them know who you are playing and where you are from. Jeffrey Merriman. Uh, I'm Jeff Merriman, I'm playing Thomas O'Shea and I'm from Perilyn, Texas. Amy Saborn. Hi, I'm playing Nora O'Shea and I am from Midland. Elizabeth Dewey. Hello, I am playing Grandma Nora and I'm coming from Bay City. Drew Hogue. I play Tim O'Shea and I'm from Gladwin, Michigan. Daniel Barnes. Hi, I play Sean O'Shea and I am from Saginaw, Michigan. Timothy Simons. I'm playing Timothy O'Shea. I'm from Freeland, Michigan. Doesn't sound like it. Judy Harper. Hi, I'm coming to you from Flushing, Michigan, and I'll be playing Mary Claire. Todd Little. Hello, Todd Little here from Bay City, and I'll be playing Father Flynn. And Alan Greenberg. Good evening, everyone. Alan Greenberg, formerly from uh, Midland, and these days coming to you from the suburbs of Chicago, and I'm going to be playing Doc Sweeney. Tonight, we also have Jacob Kaufman behind the scenes, making sure that everything sounds and runs smoothly. Finally, our narrator for tonight is Ann Kukla. Hello, I'm Ann, and I'm coming to you from Bay City. Thank you all for joining us tonight. And sit back, hopefully you have a drink and a snack in hand, and enjoy an original comedy, Bitter Alice. Bitter Alice. The play is set in Caherdineo, a small town on the southwest coast of Ireland. The action of the play takes place in and around the home of Tom and Nora O'Shea. Act One, Scene One. It is the dark of the early morning. The waves from the Atlantic Ocean can be heard among the sounds of the night. Suddenly from the quiet, we hear a series of blood-curdling screams. The light comes up in the room of... Thomas's mother inside the house. <laughs> Katie's a woman in her 70s. She's in her bedroom. She is frightened and hysterical. Oh, good God, I'm pity on my soul. <laughs> Katie's daughter in law, Nora, runs in, followed by her husband, Katie's son, Thomas. Ma, Katie, what is it? Don't take me now, Father. Please don't take me now. Uh, help us, Thomas. It's her heart. <laughs> Stop, mother. Uh, calm yourself. The O'Shea's sons, Tim and Sean, <laughs> rush in. <laughs> What's wrong? 
Are you okay, Ma Katie? Oh, don't you worry, the two of you. This is the subject of my fate. <laughs> I'll get your medicine. I'll get her medicine. <laughs> Go next door and get Doc Sweeney. The boys hurry off. It's no use. It's my time. Do you hear? It's my time. <laughs> oh, don't you be talking like that now, Ma. You're just having one of your spells. Oh, God. Oh, God. Please be gentle with me, Ma. <laughs> Thomas exit. Sean and Jim run in, followed by Doc Sweeney. Katie, I can hear you from next door. I, I, there's no sin in me now, Con. It's out of your calling, I'm afraid. It's between me and my maker. <laughs> yeah, sniff. <laughs> it's no use. It's my time, do you hear? It's my time. Just sniff. I'm <laughs> oh, sure. I don't think it'll do very good. <laughs> Hold on. Ma, Katie, hold still while I listen to you. Oh, look at Khan, would you? He's come to me in the middle of the night like my own boy. He is, is just like when you were young. Isn't that right, Thomas? Is it your chest hurting, Ma, Katie? Oh, God. Please spare me the pain and take me in silence. Oh. Um, send one of the boys to fetch Father Flynn. No, don't tell me. Just as a precaution, Thomas. I'm sure everything is fine. God help us. Listen to my son, Father, and shine the light of heaven down on us. I'll go. Uh, it's the middle of the night. Let's not get Father Flynn just yet. But I want to. Don't argue with me at a time like this. Well, tell me, Marchetti. Tell me what you're feeling. It's no feeling, Con. Death is calling me home. Relax now and just breathe normally. Oh, Jesus, I can tell by the look on your face there's no breath left in me, is there? It's no use, you hear me? It's no use. Oh, Ma Katie, please don't. Oh, don't cry for me, Nora. I'll be looking out for you. I'll be of more use to you when I'm gone. I think she's just gotten herself all worked up. That's because I've seen her. You're going to be fine. Tell that to the banshee. What, what, Ma Katie? She came to the window for me. The messenger oh. of death. What the devil, Mother? The devil indeed, it's the banshee. Oh, Jesus. Ma Katie. Oh, for crying out loud, do you mean to tell me? She's come for me, she has. In my prime of life, she's come to take me home. Would you listen to what she, she got us up for at the crack of dawn? Oh, it's true, I tell you. She's come to steal the blood from my veins. Steal the blood from your veins. <laughs> I don't want to do that. You'd have to have some blood in your veins. Thomas, don't get so upset. Oh, go ahead and let her have me, God. <laughs> Ma, Katie, don't say that. If it's my time, I'll go with you peacefully. Ma, Katie, get hold of yourself. Of course, the boss. Take me quickly, Father, into my wretched feet. <laughs> Ma, Katie, you have many good years. Everyone back to bed. No, don't leave me. One of these days, it is going to be your time and there'll be no one to come. She came to me in the night. I tell you. Oh, what the devil. The devil indeed. It's the Banshee. Oh, stop it about the Banshee. Talk to her, Michael. Talk to the beast on my behalf. You want Pa to talk to the Banshee? It's true. I saw the evil wench with my own eyes. And your eyes are failing you. You couldn't thread a needle the size of a hay fork. This is the one. Understand me now. I understand you have an overactive imagination. You'll be sorry, Nora. The both of you, you'll be sorry. Enough, Mara. You're scared, everyone. Well, go on then and leave me to my death. <laughs> let's all sit down now. Let, let's get hold of ourselves. All this talk of the banshee. Honest, right, let's calm down. There's no calm in the bench. <laughs> Perhaps some tea would help. I oh, guess. Tea would be lovely. Thomas leaves in disgust. Nora goes to make tea. Sean and Doc Sweeney help Katie to the hearth room. The banshee. Easy now. I'm, I'm not a pig on the block. <laughs> he will calm your nerves, Ma Katie. I'll make the tea. I won't have it. Now, now sit. Perhaps the banshee would enjoy a spot of tea. Shall I get her a cup?
Oh, go on now. I'll have none of your tea, you old cat. He was kidding now, kid, my kitty. You know he is. Don't get so upset. Don't believe me then. It'll bother me none if you don't. But someday when I'm dead and gone. I know. I'll be sorry. Yes, you will. Uh, you'll come back as a banshee, peering into my window at night. Thomas. Stop it, Thomas. Can't you see she's upset? You could show a little kindness. There I am. Always the goat. Not always, but often. I'm sorry, Mother. There was no way to act. Tell us about the banshee again. Sure, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. Go on, we'll listen. You'll laugh like you always do. No one will laugh, Ma. If not to my face, then behind the closed doors west of me back. We won't laugh, Ma. Well, drink your tea now and tell us what happened. Was it as bad as last time? Oh, Lord, it was awful. You can't imagine the sight. <laughs> no, I don't imagine we would. Outside the window she was. Up above. Staring at you? Oh, yes, my boy. Evil looking she was with the ghostly, sinister expression of... Of, of death, my Katie? Oh, yes, my boy. Oh, Lord. She was all... Oh, God be praised. Uh, dressed in white? Stop it now, both of you. Yes, yes. Oh, Jesus, my heart. But there she was, calling to me. Catherine Mary O'Shea! Yes, yes, just like that. The band she called you by name? Uh, sure, they're on a first name basis. She drew me wide awake with her howling. Ooh, ooh, like the wind she was. Ooh! Catherine Mary O'Shea. Oh, Lord, it hurts my heart to think about it. Go on, Ma. She was just sitting there, just grinning at me. She was grinning. I always thought the banshee scowled. Yes, you're right. It was a, a grinning sort of a scowl, a fierce, broad, grinning scowl. And that's when I recognized it was old Bitter Alice. Bitter Alice. <laughs> Here's your tea, Mark Katie. Now, just relax. You try to relax with death beating down your back. I'm scared. See what you're doing. It's my call. And at the worst time, with the feast of spring here, and youngest boy coming up with his bride. Perhaps Bitter, perhaps Bitter Alice will come back when it's more convenient for you. Now, no, stop for a minute. Mark Katie, let me ask you. Have you been uh, worrying about anything? Bitter Alice taking me in my prime. I worry about that. I mean, uh, anything on your mind that might cause you to dream or see things? Or... Oh, so you think me the loon, eh? I've gone and lost my head, have I? Is that what you're thinking? Ma, that's not what I was thinking. I am dead and gone. You'll be sorry. That's not what I meant, Ma. I've known you all my life. I know you're not crazy. You're the sanest person I know. It's just that sometimes when you know, sometimes you have strange thoughts and worries you shouldn't have. When people get old, you mean? That's not what I meant. Well, you're having a hell of a time saying what you mean, Con Sweeney. It isn't coming easy, is it, Con? <laughs> there they go laughing. What did I tell you? You see what it's doing? <laughs> take your morning pill now. You should take the pills I gave her. She has, Con. Here, Ma Katie. Go on and take your pill. It's the middle of the night. Oh, it's 5 a.m. Go ahead and take it. It'll do you. Give me some water, won't you? Take it with your tea. Sure, I can't take pills with tea. If you need them, you damn well can. Thomas, go, go and get her some water. Ma, Katie, now sit still and don't get yourself upset. Uh, there, now uh, go, take your pill, go on. No real sense taking pills now that I've seen the banshee. I'd like to be buried in my blueprint dress. Stop that. Do you think it's vain to want to be seen? Seen? 
laid out. Mary Claire says to be seen in the open casket is a vanity. Mahana, don't talk that way. But sure, if you look good, it seems a shame. Stop all this. Yes, yeah, stop. Thomas, please. Uh, stop, I said. Now listen to me. A Patty's in town for college with his bride. I'll have no more about the banshee. I'll not have them thinking they were a bunch of uneducated loons, do you hear? I'll not breathe another word. Oh, that's highly unlikely. Thomas exits. Uh, Sean, go outside with your father. But I do as I say. All this talk of the banshee is getting everyone upset. It's not the banshee. He can't wait to snuff the life out of poor old Ned. Mark, Katie. That's a terrible thing to say. Ned today, Doc. Today is the day I've heard the two of them plotting it. They're not plotting a murder, Mark, Katie. They're taking the animal out of his misery. Thomas is having a hard time with that. Well, why don't you leave him alone, then? Mark, Katie, you know why. We don't want him to suffer. He's old. He's hurting. I'm old and hurting, too. You gonna put me out of my misery? You hear that, Nora? Step lively around Thomas and the good doctor, unless they put you down. They're trying to be humane. Well, then, when you've got me less than six feet of dirt, I'll remember you meant well. <laughs> Rest this morning, Marchetti. I'll come back to check on you in a bit. <laughs> you and the Banshee, I'd best run for my life. Doc Sweeney exits. Mark Haiti, Thomas is just upset. He has no conscience, I always told you. He could eat or drink through a war. <sighs> Would you look at her now? <laughs> Don't look at me. I would not arise from my own son, but you not even blood. You're a saint to be married to that hooligan. I loved you from the day you come into my house, following the party at Tiberine's. Caught in the rain and dripping, you look like a little waif. Tiny thing right in the top of old Ned. I knew you'd be perfect for Thomas right then. Did you then? You never told me that. Pretty thing you were. You can imagine my disappointment to find you such a poor cook. Let me start some breakfast, shall I? I'll make breakfast, you sit. Oh, and the weight you put on, you'd be quite the load for Ned these days. <laughs> yes, quite the load I am. Oh, joints are acting up today. The ache is tremendous. I got an ache too. I don't suppose you'd rub some cream on my knees, dear? I told you not to walk down to the dock yesterday. Tommy came in his fish. I'm sure, it was hardly worth the trip. Nora kneels and applies cream to Katie's knees. Oh, now be careful how you rub. Gentle now. Blackout. Act one, scene two. As the lights come up, Tim and Father Flynn enter. I got here as soon as I could. Mary Claire stopped us along the way. The false alarm. Father, it appears we had a visit from Bitter Alice. What the devil? The devil indeed. It's the Banshee. Ah, poor Ned. He looks so peaceful. Ah, oh, poor Ned. Sean, he's all right. Sean runs off. Tim, go see to your brother. Oh, he's just being off. Do as I say. Tim leaves. Father, could you say a few words on behalf of Ned? Blackout. Act one, scene three. The scene switches to Sean and Tim. Sean, you can't take it like that. What do you care? We could all drop dead and you wouldn't bat an eye. Come on now, that's not true. You crying? No, I'm not. Leave me alone. Oh, come on now. <sighs> Is the Banshee going to take my Katie? Don't get all upset. The Banshee has taken nobody. Who's to say she didn't really see the Banshee? We don't know. She didn't see the Banshee because there isn't any Banshee. Some, something somebody dreamed of. It's a legend. How can you be so sure? All the time we find out things that weren't the way we thought them to be. You're talking out of your head. Just like Copernicus. 
Who? Copernicus. All the world takes it for fact that the sun travels around the earth for years. Everybody believed it. And then along comes Copernicus and says, that's not right. The earth moves too. You've been reading too many science books. It could be the same with the Banshee. Pa says the Banshee's not real. That Mark Haiti is making it up. But what if it's true? What if, just as I'm looking at you, Mark Haiti saw Bitter Alice in the window? Bitter Alice? Ooh! She's the Banshee! The cold-blooded wench has come to steal her in the night! Bitter Alice, huh? You heard Mark Katie. She's come to hunt us, you think? It's reasonable, huh? When you think about it, I suppose. I get the chills thinking about it. She could be with us more than we know. See, I got you thinking. Makes me kind of spooked. I thought you'd think me a weakling, being afraid and all. Oh, no, Sean. After all, she could be with us right now! Ah! <laughs> Look at him, scared of his own shadow. That wasn't funny. It's Bitter Alice. Ooh! I should have known. You can't take anything seriously. You nearly jumped out of your skin. Leave me alone! It was a joke. Everything's a joke to you. What if something happens to my Katie? I don't suppose you'd even care. Of course I care. What a thing to say. I'm scared for her. Don't you ever think about it? About her dying? I, I think about it. Of course I think about it. But if anything happens to her, it won't be because of the banshee. Tim notices Sean is crying. I'm sorry. Get away from me! Do you ever think about dying? I'm only 11! That time when I had rheumatic fever real bad, I thought about it. You mean... You thought of, that you were gonna die? I did. Haven't you ever thought about it? I don't want to think about it. Do you think Ned has thought about it? I don't know what kind of things donkeys think about, but he's old. He's probably thought about it. Poor Ned. Poor Ned. Tim, I just had a thought. What if... What if the Banshee didn't come for Mark Katie at all? Well, now you're coming to your senses. What if she came for Ned? There was a glimmer of hope. No, it makes perfect sense. We never thought of that. But what if it's true? What if old Bitter Alice came from Ned? Ooh, yes. Maybe she was carrying through the barn gate all dressed in white. The Banshee's not come from our cage at all! Combing her hair saying, Ned the donkey. Go ahead and laugh. Go ahead and laugh. Blackout. Act one, scene four. The lights come up on Thomas and Doc Sweeney as Tomaline enters. Hello, Tom Kehi. Hello, Tomalin. Hello, Doc Sweeney. Hello, Tomalin. Oh, I see you attending to old Ned. Huh. My boyfriend, hand, friend, today, the day of infamy for poor old Ned, to find old donkey in his day. Is. Didn't the three of us have a world of memories of old walk along Ned? <laughs> ah, how he tell off that Tom Katie when you took him down to his heels in the Atlantic. He dug his heels in the sand. S smiled and he sighed. Smiled and sighed. <laughs> I did. It was just to say thank you. Poor old Ned. He had a protective kind of way about him. It was the time that Matt Hayter tried to take a swing at me out down at the dock and old Ned came running and stood in for me. Stood in for him? I don't think I remember that one. Oh, he did. 
He gave a strong head to Matt and prawned up his legs into a fist. <sighs> it was the damnedest thing. His legs into a fist. <laughs> Would you listen to what we, we had to put up with? All our lives to put up with the likes of him. You off to fish then, Tomalene? Yeah, yeah. The mackerel waiting for me. I hear him calling my name. Sure. Today may be the day for old Max Scally to climb onto my line and invite me to take him on board. <laughs> old Mac, the hundred pound mackerel. Uh, you don't be saying anything about old Max, Tom Katie. I thought you took Max Scally the other day, Tomlin. Oh, yes, Tomlin. Uh, uh, when the town gathered around to see you reel in your prize, uh, that was a fine one. <laughs> 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 oh, go ahead and laugh. Uh, you and both of you. <laughs> you and your hundred pound prize of seaweed, Tomaline. That'll teach you to put your line out in the dark of the night. Oh, yeah, laugh. Go on with you. Uh, prize of seaweed. I, 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 you laugh too late, Tom Kenny, when those boys have gone too far for you to discipline. They were just teasing you, Tomaline. A oh, boy, a joke. Same as we played when we were their age. Max Scally. Not a joke to me. Old Max a fable. When do you realize that, you old contrarian? I've seen him with my old Mac with my own eyes, Tom Caddy, and you know it. I know nothing of it. <laughs> what goes on with you and your eyes, does anyone's guess? He was off the kiss cliffs of Castle Khan. Only a hundred feet or so into the Bay of Rin when I... Well, we heard it all before, Tomaline. Uh, we've heard it all before, heard all about it. Everyone from uh, Carvin to, to Cork has heard about the time you spotted Max Scally and he taunted you oh, from the seashore, jumping out of the water and winking his left eye. We've all had the misfortune of hearing about it. <laughs> the boys come in. You're in a foul mood today, aren't you, Tom Katie? Oh, mood indeed. Oh. What is it, Sean? It isn't my Katie the Banshee's come for. What? Oh, I'm glad you realize that, Sean. It's true, Sean. The earlier you come to your senses about things, the better. It's for Ned. Ned? It's not his senses he's come to. Boys, we talked about this. My Katie's going to be okay. I just know it. Of course she is, Sean. What's this all about? What we have to do for Ned has nothing to do with the Banshee. You don't have to do anything with Ned. Don't you see? If it's his time, the Banshee can take him freely. He's gone off his nut, Pa. Lord, all this business of the Banshee. What is this about the Banshee? Sean. There is no banshee for Mark Haiti, and most certainly not for Ned. Now it's up to us to take away Ned's pain. He's not getting around the way he used to. He gets around fine. Now you know, he's not as lively as he used to be. We're putting him out of his misery be before he has a chance to suffer. He remember to be lively around Pop. <sighs> Stop it. Do you hear me? The Banshee will take care of Ned. Tomlin, can't you talk to them? Oh, listen to him today. He needs my help after the cruelty they played on me before the whole town. Tomlin, be kind to him. Digging my hook into the rock and wheel and letting me go for other town to see. Made a fool out of me. My good name. Boys, there's nothing Tomaline or anyone else can do. He's my friend too. I, I told you now, we don't want to see old Ned suffer, do we? Do we want to hurt, want him to hurt and suffer? He's hurting, I'm telling you. Boys, I know you're upset about everything. Your grandmother is going to be fine. That's the good news. And Ned... Well, he's been in the family a long time. 
He's 25 years old and he's had a good life. We've had that since we were boys. Lord Khan, your father birthed Ned in that old barn of yours. God rest his soul. God rest his soul indeed. We took him to Tom Kitty's in an old prawn your dad blanketed for him. <laughs> <laughs> Had a place in his heart for the animals he did. I think he related better to them than to humans. The little Ned was. <laughs> Remember how we could hold him? What a miracle, huh? A miracle indeed. Mary Claire runs to the O'Shea's door. Mary Claire, what is it? Oh, my lord, please help us on this black days. Hail Mary, full of grace. Oh, good God. Now comes the Keenan. Mary Claire, what is it? What I, grieves you so? I heard from Father Flynn. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray us for us sinners now at the hour of... I uh, heard what? About Katie. As it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be, world without end. About what? Oh, it's awful! <laughs> what? Our oh, Father, who art in heaven, Oh, I can't even speak of it. <laughs> what the that devil? The devil indeed. She's seen the banshee. What? She did, I tell you. She saw the messenger of death right in her very own eyes. Oh, my lord. Very clear. Get hold of yourself. She's fine. That's a weenie exit. Dr. Wayland, for God's sake. Go on now, boys. <laughs> Oh, we want to watch. <laughs> True, it is a sight, but I want you to go and play. Tom, Katie, what shall we do? We'll take care of Ned, just as we planned. How can you think of that donkey when your poor mother lies dying? The donkey over your poor mother, Thomas. <laughs> well, all right then. Maybe when we get done with Ned, there'll be enough to medicine to finish her off. Oh, forgive us all, my father. You should be ashamed, Tom Cathy. You oh, should be ashamed. It's useless talking to him, Tomaline. There's no shame for the wicked. He would even deny her a last card game. But what about the Banshee? Oh, stop it about the Banshee. Now go on, all of you. You two out of my way. And boys, I want you to go play. Go on now. I'll take care of everything. Go on. Nora opens the door. What is all this ruckus? I'm scared of the banshee. Oh, stop it, all of you. See what you're doing with all your superstitions, Shawnee. There's no such thing as the banshee. You told me the banshee yourself, Thomas. I've heard you on many occasions. For fun, Tomaline. I've told stories of the Banshee for fun, but I don't go around believing it. The Banshee is an old Irish legend, Sean. Some of the more superstitious minded. Well, they're just foolish. Now you two go and play. Do you hear? Inside, inside, the two of you. We don't need to be making a name for ourselves in front of the neighbors. Mary Claire and Tomaline enter. Mary Claire, Tomaline. Love to say good day, Father. Oh, Father! Get to hold of yourself, Mary Claire. <laughs> what a morning, Father. The rashes are particularly delicious. Blackout. The scene shifts inside. Katie is at the table. Nora is at the stove. Mary Claire and Tomaline enter.
Mary Claire. Katie. Don't mean. My heart is heavy for you, Mary Katie. I feel it scarring over with grief of your parting. You <laughs> to bear the wrath of the banshee. Tis our cross it is. But you, Katie, how can it be true? Katie, dear, <laughs> let me be the first to say I, I've loved you like my own mother. You're a fine woman. Your mother, Eileen, was a fine woman. I'll tell her how much you love her when I see her. Yet remember, I've had a good life. And now, Norrin won't need to be waiting on me hand and foot, taking me to the bingo, having my friends over to play a bit of cards. She'll have none of that. Is that what this is all about? You, you con artist. Nora, I'm shocked. Because I didn't want to have all your howling friends here all night playing cards. You go and plan your death. Nara, now don't be saying things you'll regret. She's been planning her death for ten years. So you're denying me the banshee too. You'll see. Trust you if you'll be sorry. Oh, he always takes the good ones he does. Always the kind-hearted and, and compassionate. And the wretched are left to feed off the earth until they're ripe old age. Who will take my money at poker now that you will not be across the table from me, my Katie? Nora's right, Tomaline. There's no card game tonight. No card game? Sure. I don't understand. Ask Nora. To buy a final card game. Tis a pity. Oh, don't, Mary Claire, don't cry now. We need to enjoy this visit. It may be our last. Oh, Lord, what shall I do without you? Perhaps we could arrange for you to go with her. <laughs> we'll go on, dear. You'll have to. I want you coming over here daily to check on Nora and Thomas and the boys. Is everything all right, Nora? She's still dreadful in the kitchen. What is it, Nora? <laughs> Nothing, Tomaline. I've just been up since the crack of dawn with the banshee. Oh, my. Did you see her too? No, Tomaline. I didn't see her. I'll never see her. As much as she lurks about under our window, you'd think I would. Ah, the pain that wretched banshee has caused us. No, it can't be true. Do you hear me? It can't be. Curse the banshee and its evil doing. I'll not let it happen. Admit. Ah, uh, Mary Claire, get a hold of yourself. If you know I can control the power of the banshee. I'll shake her out of her soon as that went. Mary Claire. I'll wait by the window till I find the hag and, and I'll tear her from limb to limb. Lord, Mary Claire, don't even be threatening so. You mean the banshee's mocked by taking the violence upon her. It is true. Tate never had the mark of the banshee across his face for the rest of his life. Tate Hetter had gin spots from a life of hard drinking. No, you don't. We recall from his own lips how it come to him. Talking outside the house she was in when the old man Hatter came upon her. Sneaking up on him, she did. And he responded as old man Hatter did. But barely his fist and knocking her to the ground. Lord, the stories. And when she got up, she gave a slap across his face that was long lasting. Imprint of the banshee's five fingers across his left cheek. Tomaline, you're not even old enough to remember old man Hatter. I was 
told it, Nora. And you know the truth of the tale. He was his own grandson, Matt, repeated it. Matt Hatter was a bigger loon than you are. Loon! You called me! Being that you are lady, I'll forgive you that. But if you were a man... No, no. I won't have you fighting over me. I've had a good life, seen all my sons married to fine women. Most of them good cooks. Perhaps we should wait until you're dead to have the funeral. Nora, I'm sure you're shocked at that, at the rest of us. Shocked that we're grieving a live woman over there, Tomaline. Not for long. She's healthy as a horse. Oh! oh. What is it? A little angina, I think. Oh, oh. Uh, you, you could be a little kinder to a dying woman. Don't you start with me, Mary Claire. She'll outlive us all. Look at her. Don't you be telling me how to treat her. And don't you be coming over here anymore with all that wailing. It's a tradition, no way. You it's know that. Silly tradition. Nora O'Shea, burying the traditions of Ireland. Shame on you. It isn't all we'll be burying if you don't close your face. I've had it with all this business of the Banshee and the superstition. It's nonsense, and I'll have none of it. The cakes are delicious, Nora. Sure, they're dry. I nearly choked myself. Perhaps I could help. <coughs> With some tea. Yes, yes, how about some more tea? Of course, tea, tea would be lovely. Another <laughs> For your face, Mary Claire. <laughs> no, no much for me, Nora. I need to be down at the docks for the fish are biting. Good day, Mary Claire. My deepest sympathies, my Katie. I was proud to know you during my life. Thank you for treating me so well. Good day, Tomaline. I'll be rooting for you in the stars when you catch Max Skelly. Ha! The Banshee. My regards, Nora. If you catch Max Scully, maybe there's some hope the Banshee can catch Ma Katie. <laughs> Tomaline exits. I shall be off as well to make final preparations for the Feast of Spring. Katie, your cousin Mary Fitz will be our honoree this year. Mary Fitz? Your Aunt Bridie would be prude. She would indeed. Mary Fitz. She's lovely. Nora exits with Father Flynn. Wretched woman. Indeed. Your Aunt Bridie would be pleased. Wouldn't that make it choke? What do you suppose she's being honored for? Honored charity work, I suppose. Well, she passed a few dollars to the church, I suppose. Undoubtedly. Mary Fitz. Her sister Margaret, her brother Pat, none of them ever did anything for anyone unless they got something back. Like an award. <laughs> Who did Aunt Bridie call to in her time of need, Father? Not Mary Fitz or her sister. They wouldn't have it. The door opens and Father Flynn walks in. Were you talking to me, Katie? I forgot my hat. A cake for the road, Father. Ah, what a lovely thought. Thank you. Father Flynn exits. You were awfully good to Bridie, Katie. You and Michael. Seven years she lived with us, hounding me 24 hours a day. Can you get me this? Can you get me that? Can you pick up this lint off the floor? And never left you a dime. I didn't care about the money. See, Mary Fitz honored for all her good deeds. There is the justice. There is no justice on earth, Katie. She was a wretched beast on Friday. 
God rest her soul, took me in when my mother died, but cast me aside as soon as she had children of her own. Katie, don't think about that. She never even told me why we were going to St. Bridget's. She just left me there all alone, five years old. Can you imagine? All alone, but for her stories of bitter Alice to keep me company. No wonder her kids avoided her. Yeah, she just wanted to be needed, Mary Claire. Oh, well, certainly. She might have been a wench, but she was their own. She'd cook a big pot of ham and beans, hoping Mary Fitz and the children would come by. Never showed. Mary Fitz passed by nearly every day and never a stop. Selfish wench. And yet, when Bridie dies, who's there to pick up the winnings? We'll go to the feast this spring and, and we'll shun her. That's a terrible thing to say, Mary Claire. We'll kill her with kindness. I can't be kind. We won't even speak. That would be rude. Um, a lot of options. I had a dream, Mary Claire. Oh, yes, yes, the, the banshee. No. When Aunt Bridie turned ill, I was at with Thomas. And Michael, God rest his soul, told me it was the cabbage I put down with the hot cheese. Surely that didn't help. But it was my mum. I thought about her a lot, but I never dreamed about her. The hot cheese always gets to me, too. My ma was so alone when my pa died. Her heart broken. All by herself out on Lamb's Head. I knew she knew what it was to be lonely and scared. It's the cabbage makes me awful gassy. She told me to open my heart to her. Katie, you never told me that. I thought I'd never forgive Aunt Bridie for what she done to me. But when she got sick and pitiful, I couldn't help but feel sorry for her. What a fear we have. Uh, stay with me here for a bit, Mary Claire. Certainly, Katie. I'll not leave. Blackout. Act One, Scene Six. The scene shifts to the dock where Tomaline arrives to find the boys sitting and tossing rocks. Tomaline, maybe you could talk some sense into Pa about the banshee. Ha! <laughs> That'll be the day. Huh. Listen to him. Want help from me from the cruel joke that you played at you and make me up the bed. It was Tim's idea. I didn't want to do it. Admit it, Tomaline. That was a pretty good one. I admit nothing. And I'll not forgive you. The whole village looking at me like I was a fool. <laughs> they weren't. Longer than that. <laughs> oh, I know what people were saying we must have the back. What's the best back, Tomaline? It was funny. You're running from house to house, from shop to shop, telling everyone you got Max Skelly on the line. You were kind of, I mean, you were kind of funny, Tomaline. And then the look on your face when you brought up the big clump of seaweed. You'll not have the last laugh of me, you two. <laughs> I'll have Max Skelly on my line one day, and then the two of you will laugh. <laughs> Go on now, just like your father, the both of you. Oh, and you pulled up the rocks and seaweed, Tumaline. Old man Gully sure was mad at you. He struggled for with you for 40 minutes trying to bring up that clamp of nothing. I don't think I ever saw Paul laugh that hard. My Katie's still mad about it. She walked all the way down here to see Max Scally. Her knee still hurt. Stop it now. Go on. You're scaring all the fish with all your laughing and carrying on. Stop it. <sighs> Max Skelly was out here. Let's get him away. See, if you say it, you don't believe he's out here. <sighs> Tomalee? Uh. Do you know about Peter Alice?
the matter with you? You don't talk about Bitter Alice so she can hear you? Do you think it's real? Think. Let me tell you something, son. Don't you be denying the banshee. I'm not denying it. Plus, is anyone saying would they believe in it? I believe. Your father's stubborn. No, just as I, the power of the banshee. She is said to have led a bitter life. She was treated erroneously by her family. She was destined to be in the afterlife of vengeful fear for all of us. Listen to the story. See, out there, the tip of the lamb. See out there, past the cove. Oh, Lord. The banshee's out there. Settle down. You have every right to be scared, Sean. Be glad you're wise to be afraid. Oh, brother. That the house out on Lamb's Head is where your ma Katie was born. A pot drowned just a few years later near Kelly's Cove. Pa took me out there once. There's family buried out there. Dan O'Brien. He's a fine horseman. One of the finest in carries. <laughs> Every cove and in that he knew like he was the back of his own hand. How was it he drowned then? The Banshee. The Banshee drowned him? One foggy June morning, he tied his beat up with a pier and the out there. He came looking for my paw. White. As a sheet, he was pouring sweat off of him. I think I know where this is going. <clears throat> On his boat, in the early morning light, he saw bitter Alice. He came to shore to tell my father. <laughs> he left two rolls of gold coins for his wife, Mary, and left. What happened to him? He was found near Kelly's Grove the next day. What about the house? Dead. What about the That's house? Very sad alone. Died of a broken heart. Your ma Katie went to live with her and Aunt Bridie and then went to St. Bridget's convent. Sure, a lot of grief of fell upon them. The Banshee. The Banshee, for sure. What makes you think the Banshee done it? We'll have to go sometime. But he's seen her in his bed in the early morning light. Why do you think the Banshee killed him? Was he old? Was he old? Gee, I can't recall. Was he sick? Stop it with the question. He died of the banshee. Died of the banshee? You died from a heart attack. You don't die of the banshee. Ah, never mind you. I've got fishing to do. Yes, and you've got a meeting with Max Scully. You're as stubborn as your father. Tamaline Fahi. Be done with you. <laughs> 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 We'll scare the banshee out of you yet, Tomaline. Never mind you. Tomaline exits. Kim, maybe you ought to not kid around. You heard what he said about the power of the banshee. 
Maybe we need to scare the banshee out of you, too. I don't like the sound of that. That's what Pop says. All my Katie needs is to have the banshee scared out of her. Shh! Someone will hear us! He's on to something, isn't he? I don't know what you mean. Ooh! Ah! Ooh! Don't! Look what the talk of the Banshee has done to you. Ooh! Stop it! Why are you doing that? You're your own brother and you're scared to death to him. I'm not scared! Oh, yeah? Ooh! Don't! Someone needs to have the Banshee scared out of him. Why are you doing that? If you really saw the Banshee, you wouldn't have time to be scared anymore. You said there wasn't one. There isn't one. That doesn't make sense. Why all the fear? I'm not afraid. You, re you remember that time when you were spooking Ma Katie? I can't do that. You'll be a legend. I don't like the way this is going. For years, they'll come to you talking about you. Right, what? and what? The Sean O'Shea, he's a fine one. The time he played the Banshee for his ma, Katie. Oh no, don't even think about it. It'll be bigger than Tom Tamillion and his rock. You're going to get me in trouble again. You don't want to spend your life being afraid like Tom Aline, do you? No. Then face your fear. You're not going to be talking to me into anything. Remember when Jamie Keeney was picking on you at school and you let him do it? I don't let him do it anymore. That's right. And why don't you? He made me mad. He took my school bag and tossed it all around the schoolyard. And then he made fun of me because he saw me crying. And what did you do? I jumped on the old buddy's back when he turned around. Right. And you showed him that you weren't afraid of him, right? Uh, I suppose, but... I don't want to jump on the Banshee. Face your fear. Square it to the eye. I'm not listening to this. Don't you want to be a legend? I want to be a legend. Tonight at dusk, you'll be the Banshee. No, I won't. Combing your long, beautiful hair. I don't have long, beautiful hair. You will wonder the Banshee. You won't talk me into this. Catherine O'Shea, it'll be the greatest trick ever. I thought The Rock was the greatest trick ever. Yes, but this time you'll be famous. What? Yes, that's it. All over Caribbean, people will be talking about you. Me? Oh, yeah. Years from now, they'll be saying, there's that mischievous Sean O'Shea, the boy who played the Banshee. Ma and Paul will be talking about it all across the back of my behind. They won't know. How would they? We'll do the call of the Banshee from the tree. Ma Katie will come to the window, and she'll scream, bloody murder, and all the time, Show a cried wolf one too many times. Cried wolf? Cried Banshee. And then you'll believe her just like they never believed her now because there's no such thing. I. I can't do it! You'll be a legend. Blackout. Act one, scene seven. The scene comes up outside. Tom, Laura, and back to me. Oh, this business about the Banshee again. Lord, give me strength. You've got the patience of a saint, Nora. <laughs> Every week is a new episode. It's the fear of death that gets old folks carrying on about the Banshee. In front of the boys. All that superstition and ghosts and women in the trees combing their hair. Good Lord, where does it come from? <laughs> My own father was so afraid of the Banshee you remember that he wouldn't go out of the house in the last 10 years of his life. 10 years. He just stayed in, 
peeking out the window, looking for Banshee. It's senseless. Tis. Yet as soon as we start the disbelief, a strange coincidence happens that gets everyone up in arms, just like Tomlin. Oh, Tomlin. He's scared of his own shadow, ever since he was a boy. If someone dies, you can bet Tomlin will have seen the Banshee the night before. You say her health is good, Doc. What, Dad? Ma, her health. You say it's good. I, I mean, we're not taking this lightly. Tom, Katie, your mother is nearly 80. She's had a stroke. She's diabetic. She's got a bad heart. But in spite of it all, I'm telling you, she's as healthy as a mule. She ought live us all. She's stubborn to die. Stop it. Thomas, if anything ever happened to her, we'd never forgive ourselves. Both of you have been good to Katie. Don't ever think otherwise. She's never had it so good. She's waited on hand and foot. It's just that something's always wrong. Her knees ache, her chest hurts. She's got a migraine headache. I can never do anything right. And this banshee stuff. Nora, Katie's life is not in the hands of any banshee. Well, we're ready for you, Ned. Bless your heart. Oh, wait. P perhaps. We, we should leave you to your work. Oh, yes, Tom, Katie. If you don't mind, it would give me space. Tom and Nora step away from the scene as Doc Sweeney administers the shot to Ned. I remember you as a young boy riding Ned across my father's field and down to the dock. Your father would say, get off the field with that donkey, you hooligan. <laughs> And there Ned wait for me while I fished on the dock, cooling his ankles in the water. He's been treated well. No, the donkey got to cool his, his ankles like that. <laughs> Tom, Nora, it's all done. I'll just need your help lifting him, I hate to say. Just like that. Just like that. Blackout. End of Act One. Act Two, Scene One. Scene opens in the hearth room. Thomas, Nora, Katie, Mary Claire, and the boys are all sitting at the table eating stew. Katie and Mary Claire play cards quietly by themselves. All is completely quiet, no one willing to utter a word for fear that Tom Katie will lose his temper. For half a minute or so, we feel the silent tension in the room. The only sounds, the spoons clinking to the side of the bowls, cards being dealt and passed, and money sweeping across the table. Tomaline enters. Good evening, friend. Hello, Katie. Mary Claire? Am I late? Lovely, do Nora. Boys? Where? I bet these loving up this crew. Do that, yes. Before Thomas shoots us with something to relieve our misery. Tom glares at her, gets up with his stew, and exits outside. Father Flynn enters. Hello, Tom Katie. Father. Uh, hello, Father. Tom Katie's understandably down. My own soaring spirit rests closer to the ground with the news of Ned. Hello, Father. The work of the Lord is difficult to take in times like these. Hello, Father. 
Something smells heavenly, Nara. I made stew, Father. A, a, a prayer, perhaps, first. Uh, a prayer, yes. Lord above, shine your perpetual on Catherine O'Shea and keep her from the fear of the Banshee. Bring rest to her good Lord and continue your pouring of health to this fine woman. Amen. Is it your beef stew, Nora? <laughs> there you sit down, Father. I'll get you some. Does God talk to the Banshee, Father? What? What's up? Does God surely talk to the banshee, doesn't he, Father? I don't know that the two have a relationship. Uh, no, Sean. Uh, but Father, surely God knows all of them. And must know the banshee. Does he talk to her? We can be sure that God will exert his power over the wretched beast. Bring her to the light, perhaps, Father. Excellent, Tem. The religion has been working on you, son. It makes me prude. There's your stew, Father. Lord, the meat is awful tough, Father. There's plenty stew, Father. Father Flynn has not come for stew. He's come to settle my estate. Your estate? Lord. Sure, a bit of stew is nice, though. The black pot on the stove I give to Nora. Well, she has little use for it. Maybe there's still hope. I'll treasure it. <laughs> Have a quilt each for the boys. And my needle points for Mary Claire. Oh, Katie. Now, let Father Flynn eat in peace without any talk of the banshee. I this. Do you mean this? I'm dreadfully sorry about that, Father. No, no. It's a lovely stew, Nora. And a god would break his teeth on it. So you've had three helpings. Sure. A god may not represent us well to the Banshee should a priest break his teeth on a thief here in our own home. Oh, stop it. Oh, well, sure, that's easy for you to say. You're not on the line, Nora. Would God hold a grudge if the beef is tough? The beef is not tough. Now eat your dinner. Would you listen to the nonsense she puts in his head, Father? He's a forgiving God. Oh, but this beef is particularly tough. Timmy, go turn the stew pot off from the stove. It'd be a pity if I burned up my inheritance. They'll hear none of it, Father. But it was terrible. There was bitter Alice at my window. Call him the name. Catherine Mary O'Shea. Oh, he's got it. It was just like that. You're making things worse. Hope you're listening. She was in the tree taunting her. Grinning. And combing her long gray hair. It was the Banshee, all right. Oh, God, Father, isn't it awful? Father? Hmm? Oh, oh yes, I I'm listening. It was Bitter Alice, Father. Uh, oh, of course it was. She follows the O'Shea's, oh, Bitter Alice. She would be my um, great, 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 great grandmother, boys. And to think at her age, she can climb a tree so easily. She lived a hardened life, Bitter Alice did. She was to live her life in purgatory to pay for her sins. Ma, Katie, if you haven't scared them enough, go on, boys, do you hear? We're not scared. Who could be scared? So there not she me. is, paying for her sins for the rest of her life. And, and now she's come for me. 
Oh, Father, can't you say something to save us from our suffering? Yes, please save us. I, I don't suppose there's any more stew, Nora. Of course, Father. Father! Ah, yes. Better Alice cries, Katie, because you're making her dreadfully unhappy. What is it you're saying, Father? Hey, Padre. Better Alice only cries for a soul who will escape her. Father. Bitter Alice wails for a departing soul. Oh, sorry, Katie. It's true. <laughs> it's not. Better Alice only mourns for those who refuse to fall into betterness. Oh, listen to what he tells you, Ma Katie. Oh, oh, he's pulling her leg, he is. <laughs> Father, what a thought. <laughs> Try to bring some light into the moment, Father. <laughs> You're a clever man. Clever indeed. <laughs> now, Father, <laughs> as a matter of the cloth, uh, you can speak to this. Uh, been my knowledge that the banshee was an angel who fell from heaven. No. Where were you told that? Uh, it's a fact. Mermaids fell into the ocean. The banshees fell on the land. That's an interesting perspective, Tommy. That's a good one, Tommy. Uh, it's true. Uh, I'd never heard that one. Nora slips out with Thomas. And I have my own knowledge of the Banshee. He knows. <laughs> oh, go ahead and laugh. Go on. Another big fish story, Tumbling? <laughs> Marry me up now. I'll tell you how it is. <laughs> ah, forget it. Go, go on, Tumbling. <sighs> My own Uncle Pat Fahey described the Danchi before the day of his death. It, it was a week. The week before, fast asleep in his own bed, he saw a vision of the Banshee in his window, all dressed in red. She was in white. In white, indeed, and combing her long blonde hair. Her hair was gray. Gray, it was. Touch the nape of her cape. She was a tall woman. She was wee. Uh, a small thing, not more than four feet off the ground. A beautiful woman with cheeks as red as mountain fox glove. She was a vulture. A wretched creature with a face full of holes and more like a nose like a hawk. <laughs> she had a silver comb through her hair. Gold. Steel. Wood, I always heard. Uh, and she called out into the night, Patrick. Ah, Ooh! The wail of the banshee could be heard throughout the town. The sound of it blended through the bluffs and drifted over the Fields had traveled down more streets and round corners and into that home of Patrick Fahey. It sounded like a cat crying into the night. Patrick Fahey. Oh, now. 
now, oh, now, I always heard it to sound like a fox. <laughs> no, no, you're wrong about that. My own mother told me it was the sound of a gulp. More like, oh. It's oh. the wind, I tell you, the sound of the wind. <laughs> Definitely the wind. Ooh. I remember it well. Ooh. What kind of house? Would you listen? What kind of house are we running? Thomas and Laura step out of the house. Sounds like they turned it into a barn. You've got a lot of patience, my dear. I wish I could stomach it sometimes. Life is fearful enough without having to create imaginary fear to go along with it. Thomas O'Shea is not afraid of anything. Oh. oh, I wish I could say that was true. And what are you afraid of, Thomas O'Shea? I'm afraid of lots of things. I get afraid of what people will think of me when I'm gone. You don't care what people think now. Why, when you're gone? What do the boys say about me? He was a gruff one, wasn't he? Remember the time he yelled at us for what we done to Tomlin? You let those boys get away with murder. What's gotten into you? You're not going about thinking about the Banshee, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I has had hardly a memory of her folks. Lot of moments to take with you. I hope I leave Tim and Sean with something. Thomas, we'll have no shortage of stories about you. Yes. <laughs> it's the good ones I'm looking for, though. <laughs> I'll try to make up some good ones. <laughs> Thanks for the support. <laughs> Maybe I'll hire Tomaline. He's a good one for making up stories. <laughs> Tomaline. It, it'll be great to know my legacy is in his hands. I can hear him now. That Tom Carty, it was a hateful one. Just look how he stabbed that poor old donkey and tossed him in the grave without so much as a goodbye. He won't talk, appreciate you talking about him west of his back. West of his back. <laughs> Thomas, the good thing shouldn't be held to say about a man when he's gone. They ought to be said while he's living. Why do we hold back? Fear, I guess. Do you know what your mother said to me the other yesterday? Hard telling. I don't know if I want to know. I was scolding you about not scolding the boys. Yes, west of your back. And she said right out of the blue, Thomas has a great capacity to love. That's a great gift, isn't it? What a thing to say. <laughs> Look at me. It is the greatest gift. It'll be nice weather for the Feast of Spring tomorrow. I'll have this moment. What is it you say? Like you said, to take with me. In the quiet, the banshee sounds. Unfortunately, I'll have to. This is moment two. Oh. Oh. Steps in, steps inside, and gives them an, all an icy stare. The sounds fall to silence. There is a moment of tension, and then. <laughs> oh, I should be going. Look at the time. <laughs> I'll, oh, we'll call you home, Mary Claire. Or oh, she'll be off as well. Well, it's been quite a day. We're off the bed, huh, Sean? Good night, boys. Good night. Well, Thomas, you sure know how to clear a room. Good night, Mother. Father Flynn is left with Nora and Katie. Katie, dear, I wanted to ask you to pray for your cousin, Mary Fetz. Mary Fetz? 
What's wrong with her? I didn't want to say anything in front of everyone. She's feeling too prude to let it out, but she's not well, I have to say. Mary Fitz? She can use all your prayers. Sure, what's her trouble? Yes, Father. What's wrong? I can't go into a lot of detail, only to say she has received some not so good news from Doc Sveeney and from some specialists in Cork. It sounds serious. Well, I shouldn't say. I just know she could use your prayers. Can I count on you, Katie? Yeah, sure, Father, yes. Mary Fitz will most certainly be in my prayers. Father Flynn exits. It's not such good news to sleep on, is it? Ma Katie? Hmm? That's not such good news to go to bed with, is it? About Mary Fitz? No. Poor thing, I, I must see her tomorrow. She's that girl's sister to me. She'll be all right, my Katie. Uh, get some sleep. Sure, I, I am ready to fall asleep. Good night, Ma Katie. Uh, good night, Nora. Nora exits. Ma Katie goes to her room and turns out the light. She says a quick prayer and then tosses and turns, finally settling. It is dark. The crickets are chirping and we hear the ocean. The boys make their way quietly to the door and exit. The boys stand in the dark a distance from Katie's window. Tim is fitting Sean with a mop wig in his role as the banshee. I'm scared, Tim. I'm really scared. It'll be a legend and you look fine in that wig. She'll see me. She won't see you, even in the daytime. She can only be your see you as your shadow from here. I don't like this. Oh, that Sean O'Shea. He sure pulled a fast one. Remember that time you dressed as a Spanshee? You'll be a legend. I'll tell you. Now, show me how you stroke your hair. Like this? Right, long strokes. And you know how to hold the words like I did? I will, like we practice. You'll make all the career of being proud. <sighs> okay. You're not setting me up, are you? Ah, oh, the distrust. You're my brother. You'll be a fine bashi. Okay. I'll go to the window and make sure she's asleep. I'll give you a sign to remember. Okay. What have I gotten myself into? Okay, go ahead. She's fast asleep. Right. <sighs> Louder, and don't be scared. Be bold or you'll ruin it. Okay. Is that better? Keep going and don't talk to me. Okay, okay. Woo! Catherine Mary O'Shea! Good, that's real good. Do it again. Do you hear me, Catherine? It's Peter Alice come to talk to you. The Banshee's come to get your soul. A light comes on in Katie's room. Catherine Mary, I've come to take your soul. At the window, Katie watches as the banshee combs his hair slowly in long strides. She closes her drapes and turns her back, then looks again. What the devil? She goes to her knees immediately in prayer as the light comes on in Nora and Tom's room. Okay, come down, hurry. Uh, What's that? I don't know, it sounded like a donkey. Oh no, look at what you've gotten us into. Oh, would you look? 
Now we're both dead. I told you this wouldn't work. Oh, you'll be a legend, Sean. Why didn't you just leave it alone? Shh, would you stop? It's just Ma Katie. We're slipping like she just woke us up, just like I planned. You'll hear the confusion shortly. Huh, will you now? Mother! Did you hear a noise? Oh, we heard a noise. I heard a noise, all right. I, it wasn't what you think. I... Laura! <laughs> come quicker! It's a miracle! Dad's calling you. I saw what you were doing up there. Don't think I didn't know what you were up to. Your poor grandmother. Nora! Oh, my lord. Where do you see? Sean? Tim? Ma? What the devil? I won't forget about this. I'm going to skin the both of you alive for what you did. They go to Ned's grave, and with Thomas, they look down into it. We hear the sounds of Ned. Ma Katie makes her way out front. Ned's come back to life. Look, he's standing on all, there on all fours. Neddy, you're back. You weren't ready to go. Boy, were you? I love you, Neddy. We do, we do love you, Ned. We'll never let you go again. He's looking at us. Ma Katie, look! Lord above. Ned's returned from the dead? Doc Sweeney runs in his pajamas from next door. I heard such a ruckus. What the devil is going on? It's a miracle, Doc. Oh, now, Sean. It is? It's a miracle? Ned's come back from the unknown. Doc, would you listen to them? Look at him, Doc. He's alive. Thomas, have you lost your mind? Look at him. He knows something. Oh, you're talking crazy. He's beat the banshee at his own game. Ma, Katie. She's right. He's come back. You, you can't deny this. How much medicine did you give him, Doc? Oh, enough to put him to sleep, let me tell you. Now, Tom. He was dead, I tell you. Ned, he's reversed the power of the Banshee, I tell you. He was dead, Ma. We saw him. Would you listen to this? Tom, listen to me. Part of the dosage was just saline. Obviously, he needed more than I gave him. He slept it off. He's, a, he's alive again. Well, yes. Sir. She was there, and then she was gone. I tell you, just like that. Now, wait a minute. Obviously, old Ned is stronger than what I thought he was. <laughs> Indeed, he is. We could give him another dose, or we could just let things ride out manually, naturally. Ned can stay with us. It is a miracle. Uh, that it is. Uh, uh, I say you're right. Uh, uh, we'll let God decide when it's time for Ned. You hear that, you old wench? God will decide on it. See there, Mark Katie? There's no need to be afraid to die. You'll die when you're done. Done with what, Sean? Done with living, I suppose. <laughs> Why would you listen to him? <laughs> we'll keep an eye on him. Thank you, Doc. Thank for all you've done. And please, keep all this under your hat. <laughs> I'll not be making you the fool about town, if that's what you're thinking. You know me better than that. That I do. Good night, Nora. Good night, boys. Good night, Mark Katie. You can sleep soundly now, Con, with no fear of the banshee. <laughs> yes. Well, the sun will be up soon. Get some rest. Doc Sweeney exits. Back to bed, the two of you. It's, it's practically morning. Go on now. You heard your mother. Good night, Paul. Night. I love you both. Now get a good night's sleep. Because I'm going to skin you alive in the morning. Don and Tim exit. Ma Katie is in the kitchen pulling out ingredients. Thomas and Nora notice her and watch. What are you up to, Ma Katie? Go on to bed. I'll not bother you. <laughs> it's the middle of the night, Ma. I've got a mountain of things to do. I'd best get an early start. Uh, Thomas, can you help me over to Mary Fitz's this afternoon? I'd like to take her some bread and stew. To Mary Fitz? 
She was ill, Thomas, the poor thing. I'd like to give her a little comfort. Katie runs outside. Nora nods to Thomas to talk to her. Nora exits. Ma? Are you all right? The boy should have done that. What's troubling you, Ma? An old woman, yet I'm wondering about life from a young boy and a donkey. We can learn from anyone, Ma. I'm a foolish old woman. <laughs> Stop that. But Thomas, would you call me a bitter woman? Oh, mother. Oh, stop. Answer me, would you? You're the strongest, liveliest woman I've ever known. I didn't used to be. I let the fear get the best of me. It's all right. Father Flynn says bitter Alice only comes for kindred spirits, the fearful and the bitter. Now, why are you starting that up again for? The next time she comes, I'll not let her in. The banshee. It's not the banshee I'm afraid of, Thomas. No, don't now. What, what? What are you afraid of? I don't want to die. Oh, Ma, now don't. Don't now. Look at Ned. He's not afraid. I told your father when you were young, Ned is not strong enough to carry us all the way to Sullivan's Bluff. Ned did that and more, isn't it something? It's the strangest thing. When I looked down at the grave at Ned, all I could see was you feeding him with a bottle, holding him in your arms. Do you remember? Do you remember how you nursed him like he was a baby? I can hardly remember when I didn't have Ned. I can deal with Ned dying, Ma. But I get scared when you go talking about it. I've let fear get the best of me, Thomas. Don't let that happen to you. When Pa died, I never saw anyone so strong. I never heard you cry. I cried plenty. Not in front of anyone, anyway. Now yeah, you shouldn't be listening behind anyone's door. The man you loved for most of your life, and you were busy being the comfort for everyone else. I felt blessed. I got to have him 42 years. About half of them were good ones. <laughs> That's just it. In the blink of an eye, you always said. There's a lot of things I said. There you were, taking care of everyone putting food on the table and drawing it all up after to deal the cards. Your father loved the poker. <laughs> <clears throat> Ma, I always admired your ability to get through it, to always have that gleam in your eye, to be content. You're so sentimental, Thomas. It's embarrassing. I wish I had that. You got to find it, Thomas. You're just like your father. Any disaster sets you back. It ruins you. You've got to find a way. I don't understand any of it. I don't so try so hard to understand it. Just faith. You've got to have faith that good things are around the corner. Lest you spend all your life running for Kogo. Faith, huh? No, not a cat. It's just the blink of an eye. It's the fear. It's silly. It's one thing to be afraid of dying but another to be afraid of living. A poet you are, Thomas. Oh, I heard it somewhere. Well, you're right. All that thinking about dying takes you away from what you're supposed to do while you're here. My Aunt Bridie died 10 years before her body left her. I'll not let that happen to me. Katie goes to the kitchen. Thomas follows her. So you're gonna make a stew for Mary Fitz? First, I'll make a fine celebratory breakfast for little Ned. <laughs> you don't want to get some sleep? Oh, go on now. I'll take care of myself. But it's 5 a.m. <laughs> I and I have a lot to do. Now get out of the kitchen and leave me be. Oh, Nora can cook it. I don't want Nora to cook. Sure. We don't know how that would turn out. Well, isn't that a thing to say? Nora's a fine cook. 
Oh, no, I, I was just... Oh, sure, I know how it is. She works like a dog, so you can complain. <coughs> what is this? Go on now. Get out of my way, would you? Thomas exits. Ma Katie works in the kitchen. Blackout. Act two, scene two. It's several hours later. Katie is at the stove making tea, busily tending to breakfast. She is humming an Irish lullaby. The boys enter. Oh, there they are. Look at the two of them. Rise and shine, eh? Come give me a hug now. Come give your grandma a hug. What does a grandmother have to do to get a hug from her two favorite grandsons? Come on. Ah, there you are. It feels better than a strong hug from two young boys. That'll get me through the week, I tell you. Two handsome boys you are. I love you both. Do you know that? I have such love for you. You're not mad at us? Oh, how could I be mad at the two of you? Sit. Have a nice piece of toast and some jam while I get a big breakfast for the two of you. You'll need a good breakfast to stay strong. Your grandma can cook. Oh, now, not that your mother can't. She makes the best stew this side of Kerry. I should never have gone on about that banshee business. I'm sorry for that. Uh, tell me not to. Box. Is this my pills for today? Yes, Ma Kitty. This is for Saturday. You can take all of these. Oh, I don't know. I can do it. Uh, thank you to me for a big help. Oh, that's good news about Ned, eh? Don't count on it. He'll go in time. Your father has had Ned since I remember. Went to court your mother, carrying Ned behind him. Her father would yell, get the old donkey out of my field, you. He loved your father, always went round and round, loved to fight, he did. Loved to pick an argument. She said white, he'd say black, and never satisfied with anything. Nora and Tom arrive. Well, you're up early. Oh, well, there they are. I have never seen you up so early without a reason, Ma. What did, uh... Thomas, I'd like to leave right after breakfast. Oh, Ma Katie, I can make breakfast. Sit now. Go on. I'll do the breakfast today. I've got sausage and eggs and toast and jam and sausage and gravy. A big breakfast for all of you. Suddenly there's a loud wailing at the door. It is Mary Claire. <laughs> oh, 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 praise the soul of that Lord, for your corn and taken from me. <laughs> uh, Lord, would you listen to that? We're still trying to have breakfast. Wouldn't that ruin your appetite? I sit now, I'll take care of this. Katie answers the door. Mary Claire is on her knees with her head to the step. Stop all that wailing like a lunatic. Someone will have you locked up. Get up, get up now, will you? Don't lay there like an agent. People will talk. Mary Claire gets up and goes to the table. <laughs> She's being mighty strong about this. Yes, Mary Claire. She is that, to be sure. Eat some breakfast now, Mary Claire. I've got a stew to take down to Mary Fitz. Mary Fritz? She's sick, poor thing. But we should keep these to ourselves. God, look who I'm talking to. It'll be all over the county now. <laughs> Katie, what, what about the card club contest for Feast of Spring? We'll have plenty of time for that. I want to play your cards. Can I hold your money? You can indeed. He's lucky with the money, Tim is. It just grows in his pockets. Katie, you haven't overdone your medicine this morning, now have you? Oh, mother, you haven't taken your meds na yet, now have you? I did. Little Tim here helped me with it. Tim? Oh, now listen, Tim. The two of us can't be trusted. It's marked by day, Nora. You've done enough. Stop worrying. I know how to do things myself. Sit. Go on. Sit. And eat your breakfast. Besides, if you don't finish, I'll never get the dishes done in time for... Father Flynn knocks. Uh, Nora no. starts to get up. No, no, now sit. Finish your breakfast. I'll get the door. Well, 
Good morning to you, Father Flynn. What brings you out to see us on this lovely morning? Oh, you're looking fine, Katie. And the smells are lovely. Oh, Father, it's a miracle straight from God! Now, isn't that something? Father Flynn is the first to comment on my dress. None of the rest of them even give me a look. Who's to say priests don't have the eye? Eh, hey, Father? Katie! Oh, now they're human. Oh, Father Flynn, isn't it a miracle? She's been brought back from such despair. Ah, Mary Claire, shut your face with all that nonsense. Uh, sorry, Father. I must get hold of my tongue this morning. Sure, uh, don't you be saying anything about the card party. I uh, sit, Father. Enjoy some tea and toast with us. Mary Claire and I'll be needing to go soon. We're off to town to get a nice piece of roast for tonight's dinner. I don't know when it's been since I made a roast. You make the finest roast, Katie. Oh, come for dinner. <laughs> ah, now I won't take no for an answer. Come for dinner. Now, Father, won't you sing us that song you used to sing with my Jack when we were boys? Remember that old tune about Patsy Fagan? Oh, Katie, I haven't sang that in years. Ah, oh, come on now. Tell it, everyone. Wouldn't you love to hear it? Oh, it would be lovely, Father. Well, go on now. I'll sing a little of it. You join now, all of you. Nora gets up to go outside. The boys follow her. Ah, oh, it's a beautiful day, isn't it, boys? Should we tell her now? Tell who? My Katie. Tell her what? About the Banshee. Oh, my, the Banshee! We're, we're sorry about the scam. Tim's going to tell her. You'll not breathe a word about last night ever. Do you? Hey. Uh, not a word. If you open your mouth about what you did last night, I promise I'll skin you alive. If we can't ever say anything about it, how am I going to be a legend? <laughs> You're a legend, all right. You can't even realize. Nora goes inside. Now see what I got for trusting you? Be happy that you didn't get skinned alive. I do something really daring, and now no one will ever hear about it. Or no. There'll be plenty of time for. We hear a shriek from the barn, and Tomaline runs out. <laughs> Tomaline, you're as pale as a ghost. Something strange has come about, and something miraculous! Oh, I know, Tomaline. It's an amazing thing. A call from God. You've seen it? My own eyes. Tomaline, it was as if nothing had ever happened. It was like the years had fallen away. Something fierce is among us. Ned, come back to life. He has indeed, Tomaline. Oh, but what can they hear about the power of life? I just, I must uh, go out and tell them about all of everything that's going on and uh, just is out there and by the barn and... Uh, He's standing in the barn. I've seen him with my own eyes. Oh. Uh, yeah. The power of his eyes are his own eyes. Uh, you're right. He, he is indeed. Oh, I know it. He had the answers of the world in his eyes. Yes, you're right. He did indeed. Oh, no one knows, though. Uh, it, it is a miracle. You must tell everyone you know. Spread the news, Tomaline. The world will close in in caravine. Uh, oh. I indeed, 
I will Ned come back to life. <laughs> hey, my God, he has. <laughs> Ned come back to life. <laughs> That's the stuff of legends. It is indeed. The lights dim, black out. The end. Wonderful job, Cass. Thank you, everyone. And a big thank you to everyone that's watching. This show will stay up on our Facebook page, or you may view it on our website or on YouTube. Thank you for your continued support. Next Tuesday, we will present another original play titled True Will. Thank you very much for watching and see you next week.